I mean, everyone who has a dog has a special relationship with their dog and a really strong bond, but I think it's, it's kind of a different kind of bond. They rely on their dog, you know. Yeah, when you talk to them, it, it's, you can see how much the dogs mean to them. We've always had dogs growing up, rescued dogs. Animals have just always been a massive part of our lives. I grew up with my nan's wildlife rehab and we're just an animal loving family. So I had the love of animals there and then with the, the rehabilitation of um, wild birds and stuff, the medical side was, was there. Um, and I was always interested in science. So it just kind of went hand in hand, like animals, animals and medical stuff. Let's, let's be a vet. After four years of studying, Ruby qualified as a vet, but her ambition didn't stop there. She decided to use her career to help in a bigger way by setting up a clinic to offer free care for homeless people's dogs. It's lonely on the streets if you've got a dog with you. You're not, you're not alone, you've got something there. They have to have their dog euthanized, unfortunately, if they can't pay for the treatment. Our main aim is to keep them together and get them off the street. These guys, they won't leave their dogs for a flat, you know. I've had a guy that came in and said he's turned down four flats because they wouldn't let him take his dog. For three years, Ruby's been offering homeless dogs health checks, vaccinations, and even surgery, all free of charge. I think on our database of people, we've probably got about 100, 120. And that's quite nice when you look at those numbers, because that's like, oh, that's, you know, 100, 120 dogs that we've helped and are out there and they're vaccinated, they're chipped. It's all about getting the word out and building the trust with them as well. Eddie has been homeless for several years and is a regular at Ruby's clinic. A few months ago, he sadly had to have one of his dogs put down. His beautiful staffie Tara has come in for a checkup. She's been his saving grace in rough times. I came home, Ruby dropped me off, and I went in, and she came right off at my lap, as if she knew, mm. and she was as if she was comforting me. I've got depression. It sounds stupid, but I talked to her. And I feel when I'm talking to her, she, she gets it. Having this screen, it helps a lot. Ruby runs her clinic with the help of volunteer student vets from Glasgow Uni. Casper was due his annual vaccinations, so we gave him that and just gave him a general health check over. Everything looked fine. Um, it's really useful coming because you never know what's going to come through the door and it's good to get hands-on experience. People will say, well, why are you bothering with animals when there's all this human suffering? And they're like, well, animals give us so much and animals aren't utilised enough in helping people. You know, there aren't enough service dogs, there aren't enough dogs for people with dementia, those kind of things. And it's definitely something that I want to see grow and, and people to understand more. I'm never going to give up helping animals, you know. My dream retirement is to retire and buy a farm and just have rescued farm animals and, and, all, and all that kind of stuff. I don't think the average sort of 23 or 24 year old is setting up an organisation, but everyone wants to do, do a bit of good. It's never going to be something that I don't do.